Okay. <clears throat> Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Barshem, Yahweh Shai, Barshem, Rakar, And um, Shalom to the Lord's elect. Once again, it's another video. Hopefully, it's edifying to you, brothers, and you sisters out there of the household of faith. Once again, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the name of the only begotten Son. Bahashem means in the name. That's from the ancient Hebrew, also known as uh, Lashon Kodash. And we always give praise unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Not no goddamn Jesus Christ. And I say it that way because I'm disgusted by that title, Jesus Christ. That's not it. That's not the true name. Now that I've woken up to the truth, the hundred percent truth, that's not the true name of the only begotten Son, and we shouldn't be calling him Jesus Christ because that is not his true name. That's really an insult. Okay, it's an insult to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His true name is Yahweh Shai. That's the name that the angel Gabriel told Joseph and Mary to name their son, Yahweh Shai. That's in the ancient Hebrew, which means he is the deliverer. He is the savior. The savior of who? The nation of Israel. Okay. So why should we disrespect, now that we know the truth, like the Apostle Paul said, why turn ye to the weak and beggarly elements? Now that we know the truth, and, and we've been delivered from the, from the nonsense of plantation Christianity, because it was, it was plantation Christianity that uh, taught you to say Jesus Christ, to call him Jesus Christ. That's not his true name. As a matter of fact, that's the, if anything, that's watered down Greek. All right, Jesus, Jesus is, uh, comes out of the word Jesus, okay, and, and Christ comes out of the, the Greek word uh, Christos, okay. Back in Yahweh Shai's time, you would have heard, you wouldn't have heard Jesus Christ. You would have heard Jesus Christos in the Greek. If, if, if an Israelite was speaking Greek, he would, for anointed Savior, he would have, he would have said Jesus Christos. Now, if he was speaking Hebrew, he would have said uh uh, uh Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Yahweh, because in, in Hebrew the subject comes first. That's why I had to take a pause to think to think of what I'm saying. In Hebrew, the subject comes first. So it, it would have been Yahweh Shai, which is the subject, Mashiach, which means anointed. Okay? Just like in Italian, Spanish, um, the subject comes first. So it would have been uh Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Okay, in the ancient Hebrew, Lashon Kodash, the anointed Savior. In, Gr in Greek, it would have been Jesus, or, uh, yeah, it would have been Jesus Christos. The subject comes first, Jesus. Okay? So, um, you see the title of this video, He giveth the increase, he waketh my ear. And, uh, Really what inspired me to do this video was um, the fact that uh, you had a few brothers that was, uh, for now, that was, uh, shall we say, demoted because uh, they were not diligent in the work. And you, you heard um, Elder Pastor spoke about that. You heard uh, uh, the brother from Ca um, Carolina, uh, North Carolina, no, South Carolina, Salakia, South Carolina. The, the brother, um, Elder Mawatazak, Mawatazak, um, Manatazak, not Mawatazak, Manatazakba, all right, that's what I meant to say, is one that slippeth in the tongue but not in the heart. Uh, Elder Manatazakba of uh, GMS South Carolina 08, I believe that's his channel, still up. Anyway, he talked about it, you know, guys, uh, he said it pained his heart to do that. He was the brother responsible for, one of the brothers responsible for um, demoting those those uh, brothers. And, uh, you know, if if uh, there's a scripture where it says, the Lord's hand is not shortened and it cannot save. That's Isaiah the 59th chapter. So if, if they're truly the elect, of which if they were the elect, they would have been diligent to begin with. But again, it is written, uh, a righteous, a just man falleth seven times and he gets back up. Okay. There's even, uh, when you, um, read the account of Mark, uh, let, let me give you an example. Mark, uh, 
the one who wrote the book of Mark, okay, um, there's a scripture where the Apostle Paul didn't feel that Mark was diligent. That's why the Apostle Paul, uh, he, he had a quarrel with Barnabas and it was over Mark. Because Mark was, at that time, Mark was, I believe the, the account said he was, he was young. So his, whole, his heart wasn't wholly into the work. So, matter of fact, let me see if I can find that scripture. Uh, I know the, the word contention is in there. Contention. Uh, bear for me for a minute as I find it. Yep. Yeah, it is right here. Um, this is the book of Acts 15 and 36. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, now remember Paul and Barnabas, they, they were working together in the ministry, right? So Paul says to Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Now, today, we, we don't have to do that. Begin with Elder Pastor on now. We don't have to do that today. We live in a different age. Back then, they didn't have internet and, uh, and uh, um, how you say, uh, telephones and, and uh, quick means of communication. They didn't have that back then like we have now. So we don't have to travel all over the world, beginning with Elder Pastor on down, to see how GMS brothers are doing. Okay, we can get that quick phone call, or we can get that, uh, hell, we, uh, now you have the internet, you have videos, okay, all of that stuff, they didn't have it back then, okay? So we live in a different age now. Anyway, let, let, let me read on. It says, and Barnabas determined to take with them John whose surname was Mark. Now, this is the same Mark that ended up writing the book of Mark, which is one of the Gospels. Okay, Mark, according to the, the article that I had read. But Paul thought not good, Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia. So the Apostle Paul felt that this Mark was not diligent enough. And, and he used that example. Well, the, he, um, uh, this guy, Mark, he didn't go with us to do the work, um, to, to, uh, to do the work in uh, Pamphylia. As a matter of fact, um, let's read that in the NLT. But Paul disagreed strongly with who? With Barnabas. And you, you don't see how strong the disagreement was. But Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark uh, had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. See that? Um, and went not with them to the work. So based upon that, the Apostle Paul said, this guy is not diligent. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sail unto Cyprus. Took Mark to do what? To go and do the work. Okay? To go and do the work. So even though Mark was not as diligent, at least the Apostle Paul felt so, and the Apostle Paul was extremely diligent, extremely diligent, but he felt Mark was not diligent, uh, so much so that he had a contention with Barnabas, and they split, right? And Barnabas went to do the work by himself uh, with his men and apostle paul went to do the work by himself with his men right and that, and that was set up in the spirit anyway that's how the heavenly father yahweh bar shem yahweh shai wanted it but the point is um mark you know he slipped up he should have went with them to do the work in pamphylia but he didn't so it showed his his lack of diligence especially to to the apostle paul but did he, did Mark, uh, from that slip up, did he uh, get back in his right mind and go and do the work and take the work uh, more seriously? Absolutely. That's why to this very day, we read one of his gospels, the gospel of Mark. Okay. That's that same Mark. 
All right, so it says, So Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of the Most High. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is um, go to Google. I'm going to put, was Mark, was John Mark diligent in the gospel? See what we come up with. Diligent. In. Because it's damn, it's, it's damn sure worth for Google. Was John Mark diligent in the gospel? Let's see what we find. Because I remember reading that article a while back. Who was John Mark? Uh, and then we're going to bring out that scripture. Oh, uh, righteous man falleth seven times. Let's see what this one says here. This is from GodQuestions.org. Who was John Mark in the Bible? Let's read this. John Mark, often just called Mark, is the author of the Gospel of Mark. He was a believer in the early church mentioned directly only in the book of Acts. John Mark is first mentioned as the son of a woman named Mary, Acts 12 and 12 whose house was being used as a place for believers to gather and pray. Later, Mark is mentioned as a companion. Here we go. Later, Mark is mentioned as a companion of Barnabas and Paul during their travels together. Acts 12 and 25. John Mark was also Barnabas' cousin. Colossians 4 and 10, which, which probably, which is one of the reasons why uh, Barnabas had an affinity for John Mark. <laughs> I mean, that just, you know, the, the, the old saying, blood is thicker than water, right? John Mark was a helper on Paul and Barnabas' first missionary journey, Acts 13 and 5. However, he did not stay through the, the whole trip. Uh, John Mark deserted Paul and Barnabas in Pamphylia, and that, and that left a sour taste in, in Apostle Paul's mouth, Okay. Uh, John Mark deserted Paul and Barnabas in Pamphylia and left the work, Acts 15 and 38. The Bible does not say why Mark deserted, but his departure came right. Now, there was another account I read. It, it said that he was young and it, it, it kind of had like half one foot in the truth and one foot in the world, according to the article I had read. And this is a while back. I'm sure I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to find that article. Okay. Uh, the Bible does not say why Mark deserted, but his departure came right after a mostly fruitless time in Cyprus, Acts 13, 4 to 12. Only one conversion is recorded in Cyprus. Man, that reminds, that reminds me of uh, uh, when we were out there teaching. We, we call that the 10, the 10 hard years from 1996 to 2006. It seemed like nobody was listening. If we got a crowd of five people, that was a big crowd. Okay. We call that the 10 hard years. We were just going out like the Lord told um, Ezekiel to prophesy unto the wind. We, we actually went through that, man, for 10 years. 10 years. And I'm not kidding. Brothers who know, they know. I'm not kidding, man. 10, 10 years. Reminds me of that uh, saying that from the movie, uh, Lay a Cake, uh, the Jake who got pinched. I forgot the name he played, the character he played. In the, those who know, you know, the movie Lay a Cake. It's a good movie. It's an English movie. And there was this Jake who got pinched. And he beat the shit out of this. On the, You want to see the movie just for that. He beat the shit out of this. I don't know if, the, well, the guy could have been a Jake, but he beat the shit out of this Edomite. Okay, in the movie. And he said, 10 fucking years. 
<laughs> well, that's the attitude uh, that we kind of had, man. 10 years, 10 years. 1996 to 2006. You're out there teaching. Um, well, I'm looking, I'm looking for a scripture here. Bear with me for a minute. Oh, yeah, Ezekiel. Ezekiel, uh, the Lord told Ezekiel to prophesy whether they will hear or forbear. Prophesy unto the wind. That's the one I want. And that's that's what we were doing. We were prophesying unto the wind, man, for them 10 years. Because it seemed like nobody was listening. And then all of a sudden, year 2007, this knowledge, just when it came on YouTube, it just blew up. The Lord does it that way, man. Prophesy unto the wind. Uh, unto the wind. And we're, we're, you know, we're really only out there for the elect anyway. And the elect is a small number. Oh, okay, that's why I couldn't find it. It's actually in Ezekiel... Uh, 37 Ezekiel 37 and 9 it says then said he unto me that he is the heavenly father Yahweh prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and that's exactly what we did for those those 10 fucking years and just quoting the line from the movie Leia Cake then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord, power, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And the breath really came down uh, in the year 2007, when we uh, started putting our videos on the, on, the, on the YouTube. On the YouTube. And that's when this, this truth really blew wide open. And even though these other Israelite groups that are still that was uh, around back then and still around now, even though they won't admit it, we put wind in their sails. Okay, the IUIC, the ISUPK, et cetera, et cetera. We're the ones that put, through the power and spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, we put wind in their sails. Because once we started blowing up on YouTube, and, and um, as a matter of fact, the IUIC was a, well, it wasn't IUIC. Well, wait a minute, IUIC was created back in 2003. So yeah, they they um, back then in 2007, the IUIC was uh, on the, on YouTube. That's when Nate was selling his uh, his lessons. He'd give you 10 minutes of the lesson, or a few minutes of the lesson. Then you had to buy the rest of the lesson to, to hear it. Now he has to, and you know now he gives you the lesson for free on on YouTube. But back then he wasn't doing that. Okay. And the reason, the reason why he was forced to, to give it to you for free it was, it was because of us. Because we were putting, when we put out, when we first uploaded our videos on, on YouTube, it was for free. The scriptures say, uh, uh, buy the truth and sell it not. Freely you have received, freely give. So we followed that, 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 um, we followed that scripture. It was given to us freely, we gave it freely. But Nate wasn't doing that. Bishop Nathaniel wasn't doing that. And then uh, and that's one of the reasons why he hates us because we messed up his money because we was given the lessons for free. Okay. I'm talking two hour, three hour videos of us out on the street teaching. And through those videos, uh, a lot of the brothers that you see now came in through those videos, the, the, the newer, newer brothers. Okay. All over America and, and parts of the world, different parts of the world. Okay. G the GMS that's all over the world. So there you go. So that's exactly what we were doing for those 10 years. We were prophesying unto the wind. Okay. All right. So let's get back to, um, bear with me for a minute. Let's get back to the article there. Only one conversion is recorded in Cyprus. So again, that reminds me of uh, uh, those 10 years. But there had been strong 
demonic opposition. It's likely that young, see, young, now again, in the, so that lines up with the article, the other article I read. It said that one of the reasons Mark was not diligent as he should have been, especially working with men like Paul and Barnabas, was because he was young. And, and that's the thing with a lot of you, a lot of you uh, well, them three guys that, that got demoted, they're young. They, they, you have to see, as a young man, and, and this knowledge is truth, you have to make up your mind. How wish I said it best? If, you're, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. What do you think that means? Your eye is single, meaning you concentrate on one thing, and that's this knowledge, this truth, even as a young man. And don't get lured by the, by the so-called the false pleasures of this world, being a young man. When you're a young man, you, you're taken in by the false pleasures of this world. You think you're missing out on something. You ain't missing out on shit. Because the Bible says the fashion of this world shall pass away. So you're not missing out. I know you young young brothers, you think you're missing out on something. You Look, and you might say, well, it's, old. it's easy for you to say that, Apostle Gabor. You, you're an older guy. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, I am older. Yeah, I'm, what, 58, right? I'll be 59 this year. But... Even when I was a younger man, I, I still knew that this, this world is, and, and it was a somewhat better time back then, but I still know, knew that something was wrong with this world. I never fit in. Okay, I was never part of the world. I never fit in. And I spent many years uh, being by myself, like a loner. I'm, I'm like a consummate, brothers who know me, they know me, man. I'm a consummate loner, man. I like being by myself. So I never really, I, I was never gregarious. Look that word up in this world, all right, and I was always traveling, you know, spent seven years in one country, then seven years in the next country, and so I, I was never that guy who built a lot of friends, I was always on the move, okay, so that's my story, but I'm here to tell you, younger brothers, you ain't missing out on nothing, okay, this, this, is, this is what's happening, this knowledge, this truth, this ministry that you've been called to, so you, you young brothers that got demoted, get your head on straight, man. Focus totally on the work. D dedicate yourself to the work. Okay? Uh, let's read on. It says, it's likely that the young John Mark was discouraged at the hardness of the way and decided to return to the comforts of home. Yeah, see? And that, that's, the, <laughs> that's the case with you brothers that got demoted. Okay, hey, it's, it's, now, wait a minute now. Let's read that again. This is heavy. This is heavy, man. It says, it's likely that young John Mark was discouraged at the hardness of the way and decided to return to the comforts of home. Now, what does the scripture say? That's why the scripture say, endure hardness. This work is never meant to be easy, man. Okay, but the reward is so great. Okay, endure hardness. That's what the Apostle Paul told Timothy. Okay, the Apostle Paul told Timothy. Uh, let me start at 2 Timothy 2 and 2. And the things that, that thou has heard of me uh, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Right? So for us to be faithful men, we got to be what? We got to be diligent. We got to be diligent in this work. It's, it's all we think about. You know, there, there's no exceptions. For us to be faithful, like when, when uh, using a man and a woman, when a woman, you know, you, which you, you, you know, you, you're supposed to have other women. But let's say, you know how it is in this world. You have one woman and you're so-called faithful to that woman. Oh, that's all you think about is that woman. And the same thing with the woman to the man. If she's faithful to that man, all she thinks about is that man. That man is a whole world, right? So that's how we, the point I'm making is that's how we got to be to this ministry, faithful. So the Apostle Paul told Timothy, uh, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Teach them what? This gospel, that uh, uh, that Timothy learned from Apostle Paul, because it was Apostle Paul who taught Timothy. Reading on, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai. See that? 
So that's something Mark, at one time, Mark couldn't do. That's why he didn't go with them to the work at Pamphylia. The them as in um, Paul and Barnabas. All right? Because he was a young guy. It's very hard for a young man to to uh, really take this seriously, unless Yahweh Shemiasha is really working with that guy. That's why I named this video, He Giveth the Increase. So if you're a young guy and you come into this thing and you, you're increasing in faith and learning and understanding, that means Yahweh Shemiasha is definitely working with you. Because it's, 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 especially in this world, with, with, which is filled with false pleasures, it's hard for a young brother to come into this thing and really devote himself to it. The only way he can do that is if Yahweh Bar Shimei Yahushai is really dealing with him, giving him the increase, which we're going to go to that scripture, waking up, waking up his ear, that's in the Psalms, the, the, the scripture here, he waketh my ear, waking up his ear every day to understand, okay? Um, reading on, it says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. And that's what happened with John Mark. Let's go back and read that, that section again. It says, John Mark was discouraged at the hardness of the way and decided to return to the comforts of home. See that? So again, what Apostle Paul told Timothy, no man that warreth in tank, because indeed it is a war. Okay, it is, is indeed a war. You're in a war with yourself. You're trying to keep... You know, the Apostle Paul said that. He said within him is um, uh, the, the need to do to do wicked within his flesh. But he counterattacks it with the spirit, you know, roughly paraphrasing what, what the Apostle Paul said. So it's a war, okay? No man that warreth entangleth, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Right, so when you're, when you're a soldier, the war is not easy. Whatever comes your way, you got to deal with it. The, the main objective is to stay alive throughout the battle until the battle is over, right? So it's the same thing with this thing of ours. All right, then it goes on to say, and if a man also strive for masteries, and the, most, the, the thing we have to master is ourself, because... As I tell you, brothers, time and time again, we are our own enemy, our worst enemy in this thing of ours, ourselves. We are our worst enemy, okay? Because the flesh always seeks to do wicked, but we, we bridle the flesh by the, by the righteousness of these scriptures, okay? We bridle our, our flesh, okay? So it says, and if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. Okay, so let's get back to John Mark. Some time later, after Paul and Barnabas had returned from their first journey, Paul expressed a desire to go back to the brothers. Paul expressed a desire to go back to the brothers in the cities where, in the cities they had previously visited to see how everyone was doing. Acts fifteen thirty six. Barnabas agreed. Apparent, apparently upon the provision that they take John Mark with them. Paul refused to have Mark on the trip, however, citing Mark's previous dis desertion when he left them at, at uh, Pamphylia, when he didn't go with them to, the, to do the work at Pamphylia. Paul thought it best not to have a quitter with them. Wow. They needed someone more dependable, as in more what? Diligent. See that? Paul and Barnabas had a sharp disagreement about John Mark, verse 39, and wound up separating fr from each other. Now remember, John Mark was said to be a cousin. I don't know if it was first cousin, but he was said to be a cousin of Barnabas. So there could have been some affinity there with uh, Barnabas and John Mark. Uh, and wound up separating from each other and going on separate journeys. Barnabas took John Mark with him to Cyprus to do the work, and Paul took Silas with him through Syria and Cilicia to encourage the believers in the churches in those areas. Bear me for a minute. Um... 
Barnabas, the son of encouragement. Uh, also, I believe, it's, yeah, son of son of consolation. I've I've read other way other places where it says son of consolation. Uh, Barnabas desired to forgive John Mark's failure. Uh, Barnabas, the son of encouragement, desired to forgive John Mark's failure and to give him another chance. Ah, see that? See that? That's what I was telling you. Um, a, a righteous... So John Mark had to be a righteous man. John Mark had to be a righteous man. I mean, one, he, there's four Gospels. One of those Gospels is John Mark, the Gospel according to Mark. So in no way... Um, the Lord is going to have a, a real degenerate uh, writing one of the one of his gospels. Doesn't make sense. Um, where am I going? Um, a righteous man, fall of. I hope it comes up, man. You know how it is with the blue letter Bible. A righteous man. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Man falleth. Let me try that. Man falleth. Man falleth. Proverbs 24 and 16. Go back to that. Okay. Right. Proverbs 24 and 16. Let's go there. Proverbs 24, 16. So it is possible, even though a guy gets weak, it is possible for him to bounce back. Proverbs 24 and 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Especially if, um, especially if that man is of the elect. Even if he falls, he can get back up. Again, Isaiah 59 and 1. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. So there's still hope for them them guys who got kicked out. But they got to make up their minds, man. You know, you got to be diligent. I'm reading to you the, the, the story of John Mark. Isaiah 59 and 1. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. See that? Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But you have to be serious. You have to make up your mind. The scriptures say a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Remember that. Um, so. Let me see. Where, where did I leave off here? Yeah. Barnabas, the son of encouragement, desi decided desired to forgive John Mark's failure and to give him another chance. Paul took the more rational view. Pioneering ministry work requires dedication. Huh? Did, did, are you brothers listening to this? Paul took the more rational view. And you know how diligent Paul was. I don't have to tell you how diligent he was and is. He's still, he's still doing the work. Paul took the more rational view. Pioneering min missionary work requires dedication, resolve, and endurance, and endurance. So we got to endure, man. 
And the word endure means to make tough. That's where you get the word durable from. So you got to be, you have, you have to be tough. Paul saw John Mark as a risk to their mission. Mm. Luke, the writer of Acts, does not take sides or present either Paul or Barnabas as being in the right. He simply records the facts. It's worth noting that in the end, two groups of missionaries were sent out. Twice as many missionaries were spread in the gospel. And that's why that's they, they, that's why the Heavenly Father did it. They were still doing the work. We know that John Mark was still doing the work, even though he, he, he slipped up that time. He showed his incompetence at that time. And, and what that did was it, it separated Paul and Barnabas. So now the work went out even more because both Paul and Barnabas were doing the work. And we see, we've seen uh, examples of that today where the Heavenly Father will, will split up a group to, to push the word out there even more. Okay? So that's heavy, man. John Mark sails off to Cyprus with his cousin Barnabas, but that is not the end of his story. Years later, now listen to this, listen to this, the same Paul who, who, who said, nah, you, you ain't diligent. Remember, John Mark was young back then, but as John Mark got older, he got wiser. Here's the saying, older and wiser, right? John Mark sails off to Cyprus with his cousin Barnabas, but that is not the end of his story. Years later, he is with Paul, who calls him a fellow worker. Philemon 1 and 24. Look at that. Look at that, man. So there's still hope for you. For you, I hope you young brothers see this. You that, get, that got cast out of the camp. You know who you are. Get, get, hey, like the brother, he passed away. He, he passed away doing the work, though. He had that uh, channel, Get Your Mind Right. You got to get your mind right, man. Are, are you going to be in this thing? totally devoted to it or are you going to half-ass it remember what the lord said if you if you are lukewarm let's get that revelation 3 and 15 revelation 3 and 15 you got to be on fire for this thing man All right, you got to be on fire man you got to uh, like the song by Lattimore. you got to keep the home fires burning Revelation 3 and 15, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. Cold meaning I'm not dealing with this. I don't want to hear about it. I'm not into it. Or hot meaning I'm on fire. When you finish the, the, the when you finish a video, what are you thinking about? Well, you're thinking about the next video. All you think about is ways to edify the, the, the sheep. Like your apostle, like uh how wish I told the Apostle Peter, if you love me, feed my lambs and feed my sheep. Uh, Revelation 3 and 16. So then because thou art lukewarm, see, and that's what those guys were. They were lukewarm. They were not as diligent as they should be, especially for the time period that we're in. We're, we're almost to the end, man. Now is the time for brothers to really get diligent, to really be on fire. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And that's, that's what happened. That's what happened with those dudes, man. Now, hopefully, the, the how about Shemiah shall have mercy on them? They'll be brought back in, because I'm telling you, once when you're kicked out, it's not a good feeling, man. You you can't even sleep. You can't eat. You can't sleep, because you know you're done fucked up. John Mark sails off to Cyprus with his cousin Barnabas, but that is not the end of his story. Years later, he is with Paul, who calls him a fellow worker. So, obviously, he, he, Apostle Paul had a different opinion of John Mark. I'm sure he didn't forget his, uh, him not being diligent, but he had a different opinion of John Mark. And I'm pretty damn sure John Mark was a lot uh, older at that time. Because one of the reasons why he got weak is because he was a young dude. He was young. I'm telling you, it's hard for a young brother to really... You young brothers that's really in this thing... And you're in your early 20s, man. Consider yourself immensely blessed, because it's very hard for a young. It's very hard for a young man to uh, to uh, be in this thing of ours, man. Years later, he is with Paul, who calls him a fellow worker. And near the end of Paul's life, Paul sends a request to Timothy from a Roman prison: Get Mark and bring him with you. Wow, look at that. So to. So, Apostle Paul had a, he, he, man, did he have a change of opinion of John Mark. 
this is this is this is heavy, man. And remember, John Mark got weak. So look, brothers, I'm not giving you a license to get weak. You you shouldn't get weak, period. But there's certain guys that's gonna get weak because they haven't made that resolve within themselves. Look, I'm gonna fully concentrate on this thing. I'm gonna put this thing even before my children, even before my woman. It's all about this thing with, with me. You got guys who haven't done that, man. The Lord, the scriptures say to love the Lord with all your mind, body, and soul. What the hell do you think that means? This is all you think about. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. The Apostle Paul didn't think so at the beginning with John Mark, but he changed his mind. Why? Because John Mark redeemed himself. John Mark redeemed himself. Okay? And like I said, and, and I said that through, through extrapolation, there's no way the four Gospels of Yahweh Shai, one of them is written by Mark. There's no way Yahweh Shai would have allowed, if John Mark was a, 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 a loser, so to speak, there's no way Yahweh Shai would have allowed um, his Gospel to be written by Mark in the Scriptures. John Mark. Okay? But let's keep reading. It says, Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. 2 Timothy 4 and 11, for that reference. Obviously, John Mark had matured through the years. Isn't that what I said? I haven't even, yo, I haven't even read this full article. But extrapolation, okay? Obviously, John Mark had matured through the years and had become a faithful servant of the Lord. And it's not, it's never too late. It's never too late for you. you I hope you brothers have seen this video. And if you did, drop a line in the comment section. You got to get your mind right, man. You got to make that resolve. Look, this is it's all about this work. You got to be like Job. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I maintain my trust in him. That's the attitude you got to have. You got to be a warrior, a mental warrior. Obviously, John Mark had matured through the years, excuse me, and had become a faithful servant of the Lord. Obviously, or else Apostle Paul wouldn't have took to him. No way. There's no way Apostle Paul would have hang out with a guy that, that is that is half-ass. That's not diligent. No way. Impossible. Okay? Uh, Paul recognized his progress and considered him a valuable companion. Look at that. John Mark wrote the gospel that bears his name sometime between A.D. 55 and 59. There could be a veiled reference to John Mark in Mark 14, 51 to 52. In that passage, a young man roused from sleep on the night that Yahushai was arrested, attempts to follow the Lord, and the mob who had Yahushai in custody attempts to seize him. The young man escapes and flees into the night. The fact that this the fact that this incident is only recorded in Mark's gospel, and the fact that the young man is anonymous has led some scholars to surmise that the fleeing young man is actually John Mark. Well, that's something we'd have to look into. All right, that's something we'd have to look into. But the point is there. What is the point? At one time, Mark was he was not diligent as he should have been, but he got his mind right. As he got older, he got his mind right. And what was the reward? The reward is that one of the Gospels was written was named after after Mark was written by Mark. Okay, and we still read read that gospel to this very day so every time you read the book of mark just think about john mark how he was in the beginning and how he turned out in the end think about that okay so before i go let's let's get these two scriptures here because the point is um for you to uh for you to uh prosper in this work spiritually uh it's the heavenly father that gives you the increase I mean, we may teach you, but it's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, that, that um, increases you in the faith. Bear with me for a minute. Let me find that. Uh, here it is right here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Let me start at the uh, fifth verse. First Corinthians three and five. For who, who then is Paul? This is uh, the Apostle Paul speaking. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? 
but ministers by whom ye believed. The same thing with us. Begin to the pastor on now. Even as the Lord gave to every man. See that? So look, we can teach you and show you these scriptures, but the understanding, we can't give you the understanding. That comes from Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. So if you can hear these scriptures and understand them and believe in them, we didn't give you that gift. That's why we keep telling you, don't put us on no freaking pedestal, man. Do not put us on no pedestal, because we didn't give you the gift to believe and to understand. That came from that came from the throne of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Absolutely. So don't put us on no freaking pedestal, okay? We got the gift just as you got the gift, okay? And the gift didn't come from us. It came from Yahweh Bar Shem Yahushai, the gift of believing, the gift of understanding. So it says, who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. John the Baptist said it best. He said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. There you go. I have planted, Apollos warded, right, Elder Apostle I've planted, Elder Apostle Gabor warded, or Elder Apostle Ramnab warded, or Elder Apostle Rakar, etc., etc. Bishops of Connecticut, they warded. Elder Apostle I've planted, right? But, here's the point, but the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bar Shem Shai, gave us the increase, or give the increase. You see that? So don't put us on no goddamn pedestal. Begin with Elder Pastor on down. Do not put us on no pedestal. We didn't give you the gift of faith to believe. We didn't give you the gift of understanding. Yahweh Hashem Shai gave you that gift. So you put him, you put them on a pedestal. That's how you do it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 7. So then neither is he that planteth anything. See? You got Israelites putting themselves on the pedestal. As if they gave you the understanding. And that is they teaching that whack-ass gospel anyway. I'm talking about Bishop Nathaniel. You got people over there praising him like he's a god. Like he gave you the understanding and the faith to believe in what you believe in. And their gospel is full of holes to, to top it off. <laughs> well, it is what it is. Yahweh Shai said it best. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both is going to fall into a ditch. Remember, this thing of ours is only for the elect. The elect is a small number. All right. The scripture call it the straight gate. Enter you through the straight gate. Many shall go in the wide gate. Only a few will go in the straight gate. You got you got the understanding. First Corinthians three and seven. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but the most high that giveth the increase. You see that? Yeah. Uh, use um uh, the, the the farmer, you know, he'll plant how many times does a farmer plant crops and it don't go, don't go nowhere? You know why? Because the Heavenly Father wasn't with it. The, fa the farmer, can he can plant the seed and water it, but it doesn't mean it has to grow. In some cases, it may not grow. Because why? Because the Heavenly Father didn't want it to grow. So it's the same thing with brothers in the faith. We can plant the seed and water them, but if they don't grow, it's because the Harbar Shem Yashai didn't want them to grow. And finally, he waketh my ear. Let me get that. So I can close. I got to get ready for camp, man. Waketh my ear. Gots to get ready for camp, baby. My ear. Come on, man. Bear with me for a minute. I, I want to find that scripture for you before I go. Every morning, I think the words every morning is in there too. Every morning he waketh. Might be in Proverbs. Uh, you know what? Let's do this. Every morning he waketh my ear. Every. Every morning he waketh my ear KJV Let's see what comes out yeah this is it that's what I want okay it's Isaiah 50 that's why Isaiah 50 I'm gonna leave you guys with this 
Isaiah 50 and 4. So what's the point? The point is, you can't grow in this thing unless Yahweh Shem Yashai wants you to grow in it. No matter how much we water and, and no matter how much we plant and water you, you're the seed that can't grow because Yahweh Shem Yashai don't want you to grow. You're not part of this thing of ours. Eventually, you, you're going to get weeded out. Isaiah 50 and 4, the Lord power have given me the tongue of the learned, right, gave me this knowledge that I should know how to speak a word, right, speak this knowledge, in season to him that is weary, right, a potential member of the elect. He wake, here's the point, he waketh morning by morning, he waketh mine ear to hear as the learned, see that? So every day we get that, uh, we get that understanding through Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, waking our ear to, to hear as the learned, in other words, to hear and speak with understanding, that's what that means. Okay, the Lord power have opened mine ear. See that? So we didn't open your ear. Begin to fell the pastor on down. No, you, the Lord used us to plant and water you. But your ear is woken up daily by Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, not by us. The Lord power have opened mine ear. See that? That's the point. And I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Okay, so that's it. All right, so on that note, I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you were edified. Drop a line in the comment section. And on to the next one.